Hello, everyone, and welcome into Night Talk. I'm Eric Lapreet on Annunciation Radio. Always a pleasure to be able to come with, uh, bring this program to you on a Saturday. And today I am joined by a very special guest, uh, and we're going to, I'm really, really, really excited about this interview today. Mr. Michael Gennetti, how are you doing? Real good, Eric. Glad to be here uh, from Bowling Green, Wood County, Leeds. It'll be exciting to be with you today. Amen. Well, thank you so much once again for joining us. And uh, we're going to start as we always do in prayer. We want to thank my wife, Katie Laprete, for providing this prayer. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we gather here today under your care and protection. Thank you for your loving kindness that never fails us. We thank you for those with us that you would guide our thoughts and actions to bring you glory. Strengthen us and fill us with your peace. May we love and serve each other as Jesus has shown us. Fill us with the Holy Spirit to do your good work on earth. Amen. Amen. Once again, welcome into Night Talk. I'm Eric Lapreet. I am joined today by Bowling Green Council 6373 member, Mr. Michael Gennetti. He is uh, joining us here today because there's a couple things he wanted to talk about. And I know one uh, was a activity that you'd like to see the Knights of Columbus become more involved in. Lots of things going on. Absolutely. And that's, and that's the important thing is we keep uh, the, the activities flowing as, as it were. But also, uh, and I was very excited to have him come on the program to discuss this, but Michael was just recently awarded, uh, Hero of the Year. Correct. Uh, by the Bowling Green Pregnancy Center for work that he has done, but we're, we will get into that here in just a little bit. That's what you call a tease, folks. That's it, yes, that's, that is exactly what it is. It is a tease, and we will get into that, so please, we have a lot of things coming up, so don't touch that dial. Do people still use dials? Where, where are people listening these days? I don't know. I, you know what? I, I have an old radio. That does have the dials on it. Nice. So I assume that there are still people out there who use their dials to dial on in. Hey, that old tech, it still works and uh, it can't be shut off. <laughs> Absolutely. When the internet no. goes down. No, no, it cannot be. No, and, and that's the great thing about old technology. It does not, it does not require the internet. It's canceling proof. I love it. <laughs> Come and you arrive on the radio waves in Northwest Ohio. Amen, brother. Well, I can already tell this is off to a great start, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this. But, Michael, the the question I always start with, and then I, I, I'm i actually very interested, because I don't think uh, throughout our friendship that I've ever asked you this question, is what exactly led you to become a Knight of Columbus, uh, Columbus member? That's a great question. Good softball question yes. to start us off, well, which is an illusion, something coming on uh, later, too. <laughs> so... um Knights of Columbus. Oh, very clever. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah, you see what I, like, I did there. I like that. So, um, you know, I, I think growing up, I always thought, oh, you know, one day I'll join the Knights of Columbus, probably when I'm like 55 years old and I, you know, golden years, ready to get involved in stuff. Uh, but I actually joined the Knights of Columbus when I was, I think, 19 years old. A um, couple different reasons. One was the very practical. My father was our council's grand knight, and he had to make sure that he got his uh, membership quota for that year. I never knew so, that. Yeah. What was your dad's name? Uh, Ron Gennetti. Okay. Yeah, back in, this was my home council back in southeastern Ohio, uh, Cambridge, Ohio. I believe it's uh, 1641. It's very early council in the state. I believe the, I believe the call sign on that is, yeah, uh, 1641, uh, Cambridge, Ohio. But, uh, yeah, my father was Grand Knight there. He went on to become uh, district deputy for a while. Uh, but he wanted to get those membership numbers up. And uh, he had two sons he could throw at the uh, at the situation. So me and my brother Nicholas joined. Um, we went, you know, through our first degree exemplification. Back then it was just you took one degree at a time kind of a thing. Um, but, you know, so, you know, I was helping him out or whatever. And it was pushing me into to doing something and getting more involved with the, uh, with the life of the parish. But I, it wasn't just that. I very much wanted to join uh, because I had already seen um, back in my home council, we did uh, regular breakfasts. And this was just like, you know, seven, eight dudes on a Sunday morning cooking breakfast for Pancake, the parish. Pancake, sausage. Pancake, sausage, frying up eggs and, and you know, doing the, the potatoes. Our potatoes were really good. We put peppers and onions in them and people loved them. Was... But it was just guys getting together. And what do you, you call those pancakes? Oh, wow, that's not how you make pancakes. What, well, you want to flip them? You come over here and flip the pancakes. And guys just having a good old time. Like we were doing work. Um, but it really, you know, it was just a really great time hanging out, drinking way too much coffee and providing a cheap, affordable, but really good tasting breakfast on a Sunday morning for the people of the parish. And I was attracted to that camaraderie. I really love the relationship that those guys had. It was almost more football locker room, you know, in a lot of ways. And that, that camaraderie, that, that friendship, that being able to just, you know, be guys and hang out and do something good for the parish, but have an absolute blast doing it. That really, really attracted me to the Knights of Columbus. 
And you know what? Nine times out of ten, when I speak to a Knights of Columbus member, they always mention the camaraderie. Absolutely. That is what will draw you in. And I think it, that is maybe one of the, our most important facets that we, we provide to men around the county is we do have that camaraderie. And you know no matter what you're doing in life that you are provi- – you could go to Wisconsin. Yes. You could go to New York. You could go to California. You could go to wherever. If you're a Knight of Columbus member, you have brother knights in that state that are more than willing to help you out. Yeah, the fraternity, the brotherhood of it is awesome. You know, you've got that Knights of Columbus card. You can walk in any council, you know, in the United States, and you know you're going to be with, you know, like-minded uh, Catholic men that believe the same things and are, you know, trying to live life a certain way. Uh, so, yeah, I, I love that um, that universality that we have in the Knights of Columbus that, that reflects, of course, the universality of our of our Catholic our Catholic faith. So, yeah, no, all about that. We need to we need to lead more with the yeah, the camaraderie, uh, the community building, the social, um, the the doing life together part of the Knights of Columbus. I think that's very attractive, and that's not often. I think what people see, you know, Knights of Columbus, oh, just a bunch of old guys get together and play cards. It's like, well, there's a contingent of that, but you know, we're really moving the needle on that. And guys are they're starved for that community um, that got you know guys uh, trying to live the faith, you know, in a world that sometimes is like. You know, you, you you look out there and you go, am I the last one that believes in this Jesus guy? It's like, no, there's other good Catholic dudes out there living the life, talking the talk and try to walk the walk. And a lot of times they can be found in the Knights of Columbus. And, you know, that's something that once again always kind of struck me about the Bowling Green Council. You know, obviously you guys are aided by having the, the you know, Bowling Green University right there by by you. But you guys, aided and hindered sometimes. But anyway, well, <laughs> but you but you have a, a, a way, a, an avenue and you guys are absolutely using it to bring some young guys in to this. I mean, you were 19 years old when you joined. Now, obviously, that was, you know, you were trying to help your dad out. But then eventually it grew into you really loving being oh, a absolutely of, a Knight of Columbus member. And I think that's so great that we do need to start reaching out to some of these younger guys. And it's like, yes, I understand you're 19 and 20 and you're still kind of figuring things out. But if you're someone who's very passionate about your faith, it doesn't matter what age you are. The Knights of Columbus have a place for you. Not only that, and hopefully we also, I think, at least we're doing a, hopefully a good job of this in Bowling Green, is also, you know, maybe if you're just more of a lukewarm guy, we're helping you to, jo- you know, join the Knights, and we'll help move the needle on you, uh, both in your, you know, your your faith journey uh, and in your growing into, into manhood, too. You may join uh, lukewarm, but if you were going to roll with the BG Knights of Columbus, we're going to make a darn good Catholic out of you real quick. I like that. That's good. That's good. So really the real reason I came in and I really wanted to speak to you today was you were, uh, given an award for being hero of the year. Um, just to kind of give people a little background story, the Bowling Green Pregnancy Center last year, um, was vandalized yeah, pretty much exactly a year ago and uh, spray paint on the walls, glass broken, you know, and, you, as an individual, stepped up. You went to your council. You said, "Guys, this is not right. We we have to, we have to fight evil." And then here you were. You 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 put yourself out there, and you helped clean and just kind of go through that process. Like, what what is it that that drove you, motivated you, to be the to to be the council that went and helped out. The pregnancy center. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about the the Bowling Green uh, Pregnancy Center, also known as Her Choice Pregnancy Center, there in, in Bowling Green. So uh, they they fall under our jurisdiction as far as you know. They're right down the street from our from our Knights of Columbus. Uh, you know the the two parishes there uh, in Bowling Green. And it, to me, it was it was the only right thing to do, and it was really a great honor. Um, the vandalism happened in the early hours, of like two o'clock in the morning on, on a Saturday. And uh, I I got a call about eight o'clock that Saturday morning from the uh, pregnancy center director informing me of what happened, and she wanted to get the the blasphemous paint. I mean, there were some really horrible things painted on the side of that pregnancy center. Uh, you can look it up; it was on different news outlets. But uh, she wanted that paint off of there as quickly as possible so that people wouldn't see it. And I said, Rochelle, I hear you loud and clear. With, well, we're going to make this pa- uh, make this happen. So I put a very quick call out. Uh, to my uh, brother Knights, and we had a guy on site in less than an hour. Uh, that was a, he, Anthony Reinhardt, great dude, great father. Literally dropped everything that Saturday morning and got down there to be a, just a physical presence to have a man on site there at the uh, pregnancy center. Uh, quickly pulled things together. Uh, talked to a couple of my buddies that uh, had handyman services. Like, hey, how are we going to get graffiti off of this stuff? Turns out the graffiti removal by Gooby Gone, little product placement there, was. The best stuff. So we had guys out there with power washers 
uh, you know, and this gooby gone scrubbing it out. We had some of the university students because the pregnancy center is right next to uh, the Newman Center uh, yes. there at BGSU. Uh, early morning out there scrubbing this this yeah again blasphemous stuff off the off the walls of the uh, the uh, the exterior walls of the pregnancy center. So yeah, it was just great. You know, guys showing up with trucks and scrapers and power washers and and you know, and we had it off uh, before noon uh, that Saturday. Um, and surprisingly, the, the the graffiti came off pretty easily because I think the the kill key was we got to it before the sun baked it on. Again, it happened middle of the night, uh, and it's an east facing wall, so that that paint would have gotten really hardened and cured well. Uh, but thankfully, uh, again, it was an honor. I w- I'm glad that we had that relationship with the pregnancy center that they knew that they could call me in their darkest hour and their greatest hour of need, uh, and we were able to respond immediately and, and get that terrible stuff off of the uh, uh, pregnancy center. Uh, right away it was a it was a great moment and i it was actually a relief for a lot of people we were wondering if something like that was going to happen uh, and you never want it to but when it happened it was almost like oh it happened everybody's okay the center is operable it's just some nasty paint on the side of the wall we can handle this uh, and it worked out great honestly it was a great thing that happened because you know only god can make good out of evil and there was a lot of good that came from it and just the, the thing that struck me because i was actually i watched the news story last night uh if you you can go back and archive it yep. w2 all you know the like the speed though yeah that got you guys responded to this was just absolutely incredible and it goes back to i think what you know we we had dan roglin on yeah uh, and and he said something that was very uh poignant i thought uh, is is if you have an issue if you have a problem all you have to do is tell the knights of columbus and we're going to show up right there's that that slogan they like to say where there's a need there's a knight uh, and we definitely try to live by that. Uh, Wood County Leeds, Bowling Green Knights of Columbus are rocking and rolling. We got that call. That was an easy response. We do that all day, every day. So just to, to receive that award and bring it back to your council, I mean, that must just mean a tremendous deal to you. It, and, it was huge. You know, my name's on the plaque, but I very much, you know, received it in the name of the, in the council. I wanted to give those guys a shout out because, yeah, it wasn't just me. In fact, I was, I was one of the last guys to be able to get there. I had another commitment that morning, but I got there eventually. But by the time I had there, the other guys were in really good shape with getting that getting that garbage off the wall. Well, we're, once again, it, you guys did a great service for them, and, and it just goes to speaks volumes with how important the work it is that the Knights of Columbus do, especially uh, in this area. So once again, kudos to you guys, and, and congratulations to you and your whole council for just stepping up and being accountable, and that's exactly what, what we need in the Knights of Columbus. So once again, we are speaking with Mr. Michael Gennetti, who is the uh, council warden for Bowling Green Council 6373, also the Bowling Green Pregnancy Center Man of the Year. And we look forward to the second part of this interview, and we will return right after this. When I was a youth minister with a young family, I took on a side job as a recruiter to make ends meet. I was hired by Ken Hensley. He'd been a Baptist pastor, but felt like God was calling him to become Catholic, so he lost everything rebuilding his livelihood recruiting. I tried for six months, and I failed at that job. Twenty years later, a friend of mine with means reached out to me wanting to start a ministry supporting pastors who were becoming Catholic, and I knew just the guy. That launched Ken into full-time work for the church, not only supporting Catholic converts, but preaching internationally. Now he's living his dream. So what's the point of my story? Well, it would have been easy for me at that time in my life as a recruiter to think that that was a sidetrack from God's plan and a waste of my time. But if I hadn't been there doing that, Ken wouldn't be making the impact he is today. See, sometimes when you don't feel like you're living out your purpose, maybe that time in your life's not about you, but maybe you're exactly where God wants you the most. This is Chris Stefanik from reallifecatholic.com. St. Paul's street evangelization isn't like other evangelism you might have seen on the streets. We don't yell, and we don't force anyone to pay attention to us. Instead, St. Paul's street evangelization is committed to presenting a positive, passionately Catholic presence to a world hungry for truth. For more information, or to start a chapter of your own, go to www.streetevangelization.com. That's streetevangelization.com. It's time to do our part. This is Bishop Daniel Thomas, the Bishop of the Diocese of Toledo, and I'd like to thank you for listening to Annunciation Radio, Faith with Frequency. Welcome back into Night Talk. I'm Eric Laprede. I'm sitting here with Mr. Michael Giannetti from Bowling Green Council 6373. Wonderful, wonderful interview so far. Um, we are going to have, before we go into uh, back to Michael, we are going to go ahead and give our council announcements. 
Um, Perrysburg Council 7978 is still looking for sponsors for their golf outing on August 18th. St. Joseph Maumee 11370. Uh, they will be having a chicken dinner on May 18th. Pre-sale tickets are $12. The cutoff for those pre-sale tickets is May 12th, after which tickets will be $15. Proceeds go toward Council's Going Big for Christ pledge. Most Holy Cathedral Council has a spaghetti dinner on June 8th after their Saturday night mass at the cathedral. Off the streets of Toledo, we'll have drop-off donation points every Saturday at St. Joseph Maumee from 8 until 8.30 behind the church, and they will also have them at St. Ignatius on Saturday, May 25th from 11 until 1.30. Please visit offthestreetsoftoledo.com for a full list of items that they are currently in need of. And that's going to cover for council announcements. Well, welcome back into the program once again, everyone. I'm Eric Lepreed. I'm joined with Mr. Michael Gennetti again. And uh, we are going to be going into the second part of this interview. And that is uh, a, a, an activity that your council is currently going to be participating in yep. that you would like to see eventually grow. And I think is a great idea to attract uh, newer, younger members because I think they would be really in- interested in getting involved. But that is a softball game. That That is right. We got our uh, Knights of Columbus uh, softball game uh, coming up on Sunday, July 28th at 2 o'clock down in Bowling Green. So the um, you want a little backstory on how we, how I, we got here? I was just going to ask you, what's the backstory on the softball game? Right. So in 2022, um, our council celebrated our 50th anniversary of the founding of, uh, of the council. So we wanted to do some extra special anniversary celebrations two years ago. Um, we had a uh, parade float in the BG Holiday Parade. We did a uh, special dinner uh, for all the founding members uh, of the council. There were only three living uh, at that point. And then uh, for our third activities, we hit upon this idea of doing a Knights of Columbus softball game. Uh, because of the kind of the unique nature of our, the construction of our council, so we're a Bowling Green Council, and we comprise both parishes in Bowling Green. So we have St. Aloysius and Catholic. St. Thomas. And correct. then St. Thomas More, which is the university parish uh, that services the, the BGSU college students. So we're one council, um, one council, but comprised of uh, men from two parishes. So the idea was to make it uh, a Knights of Columbus softball game, but have the St. Al's guys versus the St. Tom's guys out on the field. And uh, so first one we did was in... I think it might have actually been August that year uh, of 2022, and we had an absolute blast. Um, you know, of course, you know, just good natured ribbing and rivalry between the the brother knights out there on the field. Uh, we had lots of kids and families out there, and um, even though it, uh, yeah, I think we even fought some rain that year, but it was an absolute blast. Like it was one of those things. By the end of the game, it was already decided. Like this is going to be an every year activity for us. Going forward. So we did it uh, again last year. We had our, our Knights of Columbus softball game. Uh, St. Tom's won the first year. St. Al's redeemed ourselves, came back uh, in one uh, last year. Huh? And so, yeah, this is the third year of the annual Knights of Columbus Bowling Green uh, softball game. And, uh, yeah, people are, we've been literally talking about it for the last year. Uh, we, we, you come on out, you bring the family. We have a big old cookout afterwards. And where where is the, are the right. softball game? So, so, yeah, we're at Carter Park in Bowling Green. They're at the softball diamonds. You okay. can't miss it. All right. And this this is, I mean, we're, again, Knights of Columbus, pro-God, pro-life, pro-family organization. We have the softball game right across from this enormous uh, playground uh, that's there. So if the kids get bored bo- during the game, after the game, they're out there having a great time out on the playground. Our awesome uh, brother knight, uh, Jason Sattler, literally brings his smoker trailer Mm -hmm. and smokes, like, ribs and brats. Like, we're not doing hamburgers and hot dogs here. We're doing, like, barbecue chicken, ribs, brats uh, for the post-meal game. Uh, We've got the the pavilions rented. And so it's just a a big old family event. Uh, And we invite, you know, members of the, like, just if you're a member of the parish, if you're Bowling Green Catholic, just come on out. You you can find somebody to root for or somebody to boo, right, (laughs) you know? And it's uh, we had Nick Delatore out there doing play by play last year. We got the PA system Excellent. and walk up music. Uh, we got uniforms like it's it's an absolute blast, and it's an athletic event, right? Um, and that's another way of uh, engaging people, um, especially men. Men evangelize by doing things together. They build relationships by doing something together. Uh, and we're out there doing this this awesome sporting event, you know, and, and having a good time with it and trash talking, giving each other a hard time. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a fabulous event and, uh, we're really excited about, we, you know, we've gotten members out of it. 
uh, especially uh, we've had some guys uh, that we needed to fill out the roster uh, that weren't Knights of Columbus, but they're Knights of Columbus now, and they're loving every minute of it. That's fantastic. I, I love the fact that you guys, you just, you thought of everything. I mean, you, like you said, you have the walk up music, you got the uniforms, the, the cookout after. I mean, this is an, it sounds like this is an all day event. Oh yeah. I, yeah. All, Wood County leads. We get, we go big, we go home and we're, we're looking to make it bigger and better, uh, every year. Um, so, uh, this year, um, we're, we're hoping, we're hoping to get the bishop out there, maybe throw out the first pitch. Uh, which would be fun. Uh, it's just a matter of time before we have Jim Tomey playing for one of our teams. Oh, oh no, we, we totally have a connection to Jim okay. Tomey. It's so only a matter go, of time. Okay. I'm not even, oh, I'm oh, not right. even spitballing. Like okay. this is going to happen. That was a real thing. That's okay. absolutely right. a real thing. Well, congratulations. I mean, this just sounds like so much fun and, and I'm already putting it on my calendar. Put it on your calendar. Come on out. I definitely want to come out. I want to, this just sounds like such a spectacle. And this is absolutely free, right? Yeah, totally free. It's just a literally a social. We're out there. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, play the softball game. Uh, you know, the kids are running around playing on the playground. We've got the pavilions rented. Jason's smoking meat the whole time. So you've got this cloud of barbecue smoke wafting over the whole thing. Like this is Americana in the best possible way. That's Americana is absolutely the perfect word for it. Yes. I, I, that's awesome. So Michael, this has been so much fun so far. I'm sitting with Michael Gennetti. Um, we're going over the uh, softball game that's going to be upcoming between, uh, St. Al's parish and St. Thomas More's parish. Um, that'll be coming, uh, July 28th. Correct. Two o'clock out at Carter Park. Two o'clock out at Carter Park. So definitely put that on your calendar. And eventually I know as we, because we kind of had, we have our conversation, uh, before we went on the air, you would like to see eventually if, if you guys can really grow this, you'd like to see other Knights of Columbus councils come out, maybe even have like a tournament, um, something of that nature. Yeah. No, that definitely could be something, uh, we look at as far as a more, you know, broader Northwest Ohio Knights of Columbus event. I'd love to maybe if we move in that direction invite the two perrysburg councils right st rose and st john the 23rd to come on down then we got a little wood county rivalry yeah. bowling green versus perrysburg kind of a thing uh, and maybe expand that in the in the years to come um plus in this year uh we're we're gonna have a trophy okay and you know though of course it's gonna stay inner council be something to play for though exactly okay. so it's gonna be the mcgivney cup so we've all heard of the Stanley Cup, right? This is going to be the Father Michael McGivney Cup. And, the uh, of course, we'll have the – it won't be that big, but it'll be a giant, like, salad bowl-sized cup mounted on, you know, a a, a piece of wood. And we'll put the, the score from every game on there. It's kind of like, you know, the, the, the uh, memorialization uh, of the winner each year. And then that'll give those guys from that parish bragging rights throughout the year. So we got trophies, we got bragging rights. It's a, it's an awesome event. So yeah, very much Knights of Columbus. We we were like, what would we call the trophy? Well, naturally the McGivney cup. I mean, what, what else could you call it? It's right. Perfect. Yeah. Well, once again, and we're sitting here with my, Mr. Michael Gennetti from Bowling Green Council, uh, put it on your calendar, softball game, July 28th out at Carter Park. It will be a day of food and fun and family. And uh, I think it's so excellent that your council has come up with this idea and is promoting it like they are. Um, is there any other activities? Um, you know, I know you guys are, you guys do things a little different than most other councils do. Is there, because Wood County leads, right? Wood Wood County leads. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you guys really participate in, um, that you maybe would like to see other councils participate in? Yeah. There, there's one thing out there as I was preparing for this, like what would be, you know, another thing that we really do that we need more nights to get involved in. And I don't think we have the date for it yet. But in October, you know, there's the annual uh, Eucharistic procession from St. Catherine of Siena to the last remaining abortion facility in Toledo that's right down the road from it. And our Bowling Green Knights, the last three or four years, have taken the lead on basically being the, the vanguard in protecting Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and Bishop Thomas as we do the Eucharistic procession from St. Catherine's down to the uh, the abortion clinic there. And uh, we need more knights to be involved with that. Uh, you know, we had 19 guys from our from our council last year, plus some some stragglers from here and there. But we got to get more of the, the Toledo uh, Knights of Columbus involved with that. And all you're doing is you're just walking next to the people in the procession and the bishop and basically just putting bodies between, you know, the bishop and, and Jesus and uh, the, uh, the pro-death mob that's out there just saying terrible things and, you know, you kind of move from being angry at them to just feeling bad for them because they're, they're a lot of lost souls. But, you know, 
it's good to have a physical barrier, a physical male presence out there. And it's, uh, I really, really encourage other councils, even if just put four or five guys together, jump in a truck, go out there. It's a Saturday morning. There's mass. Uh, then there's the procession. I'll make sure you've got the date when it's announced. It's always yes, in October. It's always in October. Uh, you know, which is, well, which is a respect life month, also a month of Mary. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a fabulous, uh, event. We really got to get more knights involved with protecting Jesus and the bishop. Well, excellent. We're going to, we're going to enjoy it. We're going to look forward to hearing more about that and yep. getting more knights involved. Now, one last question, as I ask everyone, and Michael, I just want to thank you for your time once again today. It's been absolutely fantastic. Is, the question of the hour. Okay. If you could have if you could have lunch with any biblical figure, who would it be and why? Okay. This is maybe a little obscure. I would go with There are no wrong answers. Oh, that's good. Uh Ishbal. And there's that look on your face. Yeah. Ishbal was one of David, King David from the Old Testament, one of his elite warriors. And he's really his name appears only once in the Bible, and he is referred to as Ishbal, chief of the three. And then the three warriors are listed. They were like, you had David's army, then you had the 30, which was like his special forces, and then you had the three. And Ishbal was chief of the three. And they were like King David's SEAL team. And I would love to have lunch with that guy. And knowing how he served King David, you know, fighting the Philistines, establishing the kingdom uh, of the Hebrews back in the day. He's the guy I want to sit down with. That's one of the best ones. That's one of the best ones. We're going to put that on the board. Hey, that, we, is, that is very creative and original. Wait, I like that. Hey, Wood, Wood County Leeds. I had to get, I had to get a guy in there. <laughs> that, that sounds like he'd be a member of the Knights of Columbus. Like he was David's right hand warrior. Well, it's, it's just important. Remember, we all need to be warriors for God, yes. uh, especially at this time. So once again, everyone, uh, I, I'm Eric Lepree. This has been Night Talk. We've had an absolutely fantastic interview with Mr. Janetti, Mr. the hero of the year for the Bowling Green Pregnancy Center. Congratulations on that award. Thank you. Good luck with the softball game. I know I'll be out there because I definitely know I want to get some ribs and – I want to see you play baseball. Hey, I, I really do. Come on down, Eric. You, right. You'll be begging to. You'll be saying, "Put me in, coach. I want to be a part of this." I might end up doing that. So, but once again, everyone, this has been Night Talk. Thank you so much again for joining us, and have a great week. God bless. Hey, friends. Peter Range here, Executive Director of Ohio Right to Life. Please join me for Say Yes to Life here on Annunciation Radio Thursday afternoon at four or Sunday morning at nine thirty a.m. On demand as well, anytime on the Annunciation Radio app.